Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about faux painting techniques, and we'd like to thank Jared Rowan for liking and sharing the podcast. The ancient Egyptians developed faux painting techniques to create the look of wood grain on surfaces. Are you going to spell it, faux? Faux, F-A-U-X, okay. so like a fake look. Right. And when archaeologists uncovered Pompeii, you know, mm-hmm. the city that was buried by Mount Vesuvius yes, in knows. 79 AD. A lot of the Roman faux painting techniques were found. So they were taking paint and creating the look of marble and stone to decorate walls and wood columns. Hmm, exciting. So today we'll cover a couple of the most popular faux finish techniques. And you can create... there's a, a lot of different yeah, types. Yeah, amazing. And you can create a... Re- and, and some use like feathers mm-hmm. and, I mean, all kinds of weird stuff. They have combs to create a, a look. <laughs> and you can do this primarily on your wall, but you can also do it on trim and molding, on fireplaces, and furniture. furniture. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. So you can get the look of marble, leather, brick, stone. Mm-hmm. And for Denim. wall, yeah, yeah, it's weird, man. <laughs> so you, you definitely have to Google some images yeah. of faux painting. And for walls, faux painting is usually going to be easier and less expensive than trying to put up wallpaper to get a real unique look. And you don't it's have good. the seams. Exactly. So you don't have seams. You don't have to worry about glues, adhesives. It's much easier to change right. down, down the road. And then if, a primer. <laughs> you're right, right. And then if you have an old home with plaster walls that are just starting to crack and get pitted, which, you know, they're sometimes tough to work with, mm-hmm. a faux finish can completely cover that, or you can really add to the look of the plaster. Well, my friend, when she bought her first house and we didn't know how to do, like, drywall repair, right. everything was covered in paneling. So we tore it all off. Uh-huh. It was all covered with liquid nails. Right. So we just kind of sanded it down. But then we did all of this kind of technique right over the wall. Yeah. It was quick. It was easy. Smart. Venetian plaster is one technique, and this uses plaster applied to the wall with a trowel. And you can use traditional plaster or joint compound Mm -hmm. or these pre-mixed Venetian plasters. And it's actually just a thickened latex paint, so very easy to work with. And this is going to give you a three-dimensional effect. And with the paint versions, it's a tint base. So you're going to have the store add whatever color you like to it. Mm -hmm. And then some of these products are designed. So read the label. Some are designed to be rolled on with a paint roller, like a traditional paint. And mm-hmm. then you're going to take a trowel and just randomly give ridges to it at different heights. And you're going to be overlapping it. So it's almost and, like a half moon. Right, so a sweeping... Or a half circle. Like right, exa- <laughs> exactly. Not a half moon. <laughs> and most pros like this alternating sweeping motion. Mm-hmm. So it's overlapping each stroke. And you allow this to dry. And then you're going to apply a second coat with a trowel only. And so you're working over the entire wall with these random sweeping motions. Mm -hmm. Some products, after it dries, you're going to lightly sand it or you're going to scrape it with the edge of the trowel. And it actually produces a sheen Hmm. in different areas. So you're going to knock down certain areas and you're going to make it shiny and less shiny in other areas. So it really gives like a three-dimensional effect to it. Interesting. And then... Some products are designed that both coats are going to be troweled in rather than one with a roller and one with a trowel. Mm-hmm. And with the first coat, with the troweling products, you don't want to worry about full coverage. So you're randomly kind of going over the wall with a trowel. Right. You're giving these, these shapes to it, and then you're coming back with the second coat. Some Venetian finishes recommend using a sponge roller for the second coat and then lightly knocking it down mm-hmm. with, a, with a trowel. And with the pre-mixed Venetian finishes in a tint base, this is going to be the easiest to apply. So you should definitely read the label. Yeah, because each, each, yeah, each one has its own <laughs> unique uh, you know, ingredients mm-hmm. and also the way you're going to apply it, which is interesting. And it does a great job of creating this just this multi-dimensional textured look, mm-hmm. and it's going to cover any rough-looking plaster or drywall. And, and if you're working on a wall that needs repairs, you'd want to first patch any holes or cracks right and then prime them and then you can go over this and it's just going to cover it all have you ever done this we used to like in a lot of the old homes we bought a lot of these were you know very old plaster and lath construction and, mm-hmm. and they were just starting to crack and get pitted so we actually just did a stucco cover over the whole thing <laughs> so we would take joint compound put it into a, a paint tray right and then we would take a looped roller so it was just this roller cover with with it just looped with like a nylon right. material and we would roll a thin coat of this on and it would pull these peaks 
and create this just an nice. amazingly uniform, <laughs> blended, you know, t uh, stucco look. You had to hide the terrible wall behind oh, it. Oh, man, it looked beautiful. Because once you painted it, I, I mean, it was uniform, kind of crazy looking, but it, but it really took an old wall nice. and made it uniform. So you never want to lean against any of oh, those no, walls. Oh, no, you couldn't. Yeah, it's a form of discipline if your kids are being bad. Stand against the wall. A ragging technique is going to give you a multicolored textured look to your walls, and this doesn't create depth like a Venetian plaster. It just gives the appearance of depth. So it's fake 3D? Right, yeah, faux 3D. <laughs> and this is going to hide small imperfections. A lot of designers were suggesting using two colors that were very similar, so mm -hmm. you're creating kind of light and dark shades. Some paint stores are going to have charts of suggested color combinations, and many faux finishes use a glaze to create the depth of the paint on the top coat. Mm. And your glaze is this milky, translucent liquid that you're going to add paint to for the top coat. And this is going to slow down the drying time so you can work the paint over the base color and, and you know, you can do your techniques in more time. So like the paint primers in one? Yeah, they draw, much, a lot of the new formulas dry so fast right. that the glaze really gives you a working time. And a water-based glaze with a water-based paint is going to be the easiest to work with and the mm -hmm. easiest to clean up. And check the label. You're usually going to mix four parts glaze to one part paint to create your top coat. Which I would call ahead to the store to see if they have the, that amount of glaze. Yeah, because some local hardware stores aren't going to have a, a big selection. So right. if you have a big project and yeah. you need X amount of gallons, <laughs> yeah. I would call ahead. You can use a ragging technique right over the color you have on your wall now, or right. you can paint your walls a base color and then use a ragging color on top of that. After it dries. Yeah, you'd want it to fully dry. You want to use a glaze and mix with your top coat. A paint tray is going to be easy to work out of, so you can use a lint-free cotton cloth, bundle it up, wear disposable gloves, and you're going to dip this rag into the paint lightly. Mm -hmm. You can either dab off the excess on the top of your paint tray, or you can have a, another rag off to the side, maybe laying on top of a drop cloth. Hopefully. And, and, <laughs> yes, and get the excess paint off of that. And now you're going to start dabbing this on the wall lightly, and you're going to alternate the position of your hand. You're going to overlap these shapes and work a small area, like three foot by three foot, till it looks good. Mm -hmm. And you're allowing some of the bottom coat to show through, and right. you're getting these unique shapes on there. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to keep repeating this, blending it over the whole wall. Pretty easy to do. And once it dries, you can add additional colors over the top of this. Right. You can really get pretty unique. Well, they also have like a mitt that you can hit by yeah, that yeah. has the rag on yeah, it. Yeah, so that's cool. much easier. I've used that. Oh, really? Or there's ragging rollers. So you're right. using like a roller frame. Exactly. And it's the ragging technique, but much easier to do. Well, I like the rollers because then you can use the roller on the main part of the wall and right. then actually take a rag. So in tight corners or around trim, right. then, you can, then you can use a rag. So you can make that go very fast. So like 20 years ago, for some reason, the women in my mom's neighborhood, they all decided to paint their living rooms the same. So they had like white walls and then this one lady came over and did the ragging technique. All, uh -huh. th all three households had the same the same colors in their living room. Uh, I have uh, no idea why because it didn't look that good. Right. But she did like all of them. So I mean, uh, I did guess. Did she it, charge anything for it? No, it was weird. Wow. I Therapy? don't even think my mom really liked it. <laughs> she didn't have it for that long, but it was, it was strange. Yeah. I think everybody wanted to have the same thing. It was weird. <laughs> Another ragging technique is to use a paint roller and you're going to roll the glazed top coat onto a section of the wall and then you're going to use the rag pressing it into the surface and you're actually pulling off glaze hmm. and it's going to give a little different effect. And with this you're going to use a bucket of water and you're going to rinse the rag out every few times you use it. Completely wring out the water and then just start pressing it into that glaze, and it gives just a, a unique. And it's funny when you see them side by side, mm -hmm. whether you're applying glaze or taking off glaze, right. it gives it a, a completely different look. Interesting. With that ragging effect where you're pulling off the glaze, Purdy and Wooly both have highly rated roller covers. And with the Purdy, this is like a loose cloth on a roller, and as you use it, it keeps kind of changing its shape right. and changing the effect. Wooly, it's W-O-O-L-I-E, they've got this puffy rag on a roller cover, and this makes very distinctive patterns, and the material is designed to really pull that glaze off. And they're suggesting that you use a base coat with a satin finish, 
you're going to roll the glaze on the wall two or three feet wide, and then you're going to use this rag roller over the surface at different angles. Mm -hmm. And the more you roll over the surface, it's going to create a softer look. But mm. if you just roll it over once or twice in a couple different directions, I mean, it pulls off large sections and, and really gives it a distinctive look. Mm. You can use textured paint with a rag or rag roller to get another effect. And you can either buy textured paint or you can get little packets. Right, that you can add to it. And it's either sand or it's these. It's a very light material that gives that textured effect. And Benjamin Moore has a textured paint technique. They suggest that you use their sand paint to the wall first, almost like a primer. And then after it dries, you're going to roll on a base coat and let it dry so you've got your color as a base. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to add a glaze with a contrasting color, and they want you to wipe it in circular motions with a rag, huh. and this is going to create a really unique effect. Interesting. Color washing is another technique, and this was popular in Italy hundreds of years ago. They would cover these old faded plaster walls with paint, and they would use a stiff brush and they would paint it on in a crisscross pattern, just kind of big sweeping crosses on the wall. And they wanted to leave the look of the paint strokes on, on the wall. So it created like a weave to cover up, you know, little cracks and mm. things. And then it also allowed that faded color to come through, almost like an antiquing look underneath right. it. A badger hair brush is popular with designers. So you're going to paint a top coat over a base coat and you're going to leave behind these paint strokes and you're going to show the color, color off from behind mm -hmm. and these badger hair brushes they say do a really nice job <laughs> of leaving those paint strokes you know they use badger hair shaving brushes for a shaving cream no didn't know that but thank you <laughs> another color wash technique you're going to paint on your base coat let it dry completely or use your existing wall color you're going to brush on your contrasting color with a glaze in it and work in these sweeping crisscross patterns, random and choppy. And you're going to let a lot of the base coat show through. You're going to let this dry. And now you're going to add a second colored glaze over the top no of way. the other one in a different contrasting color. You're going to do the same crisscross pattern with a brush. And you're going to work in an area three foot by three foot. And then you're going to lightly brush it with another dry brush over the top of the wet glaze. And you're going to pull off some of this to leave more of the color. And you're going to constantly dry off that dry brush, that second brush you're using. Right. So as you paint it crisscross the second glaze, then you're going to come back over it with this dry brush and create these streaks where you're allowing that first glaze to show through. This seems like a lot of work. <laughs> but it's pretty wild when you look at it. It's definitely a, a, a completely different look mm -hmm. than the original crisscross style. <laughs> Another type of color wash is using a two color roller. And so this has a special split roller tray. It has two sides. Each side is going to accept a different color. Wow. And then you have this two color roller. It has two sides on the same roller. So it's split in the center and mm -hmm. this allows it to go into this tray and there's two top rated companies, Wooly, W-O-O-L-I-E, and Tex Master, T-E-X. Both had highly rated two color roller systems. Mm. And with this, you're gonna work in a three by three area. A lot of the designers were saying, pick a color strip that you like and choose two colors that are about three shades apart. Mm. You're gonna work in a three by three area. You're randomly going to crisscross the pattern and you're gonna press lightly. The more you roll an area, the more it'll blend the colors. And at the corners and the molding and trim, they've got these little edging tools that you can use. Or you can take a paintbrush and you can lightly dab on the one color and then take a second paintbrush and lightly dab on the second color. So I would say it's extremely important to buy the right amount of paint. <laughs> yeah, in this exactly. Technique. And if you're doing a big room, intermix them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is a very easy style to produce because you're just putting a roller and you're rolling it back and forth at random right. patterns throughout the wall. It's just a little time consuming in the corners and then around trim. Sponge painting is considered one of the easiest finishes you can do, and I would experiment with a scrap piece of drywall or a board. Many of the paint stores, they're going to have these specially made practice boards. Sherwin-Williams has a two-pack, so you get two 12-inch by 12-inch boards, and they have adhesive backing on it. So you can practice and then stick it up on the wall and see how good you did. And that gives you a feel for, you know, do I like the colors? Do I want right. to change the colors? And with the sponging, you can create a range of effects from either very subtle, almost like cloud-like patterns to you can create these granite and limestone looks. Pretty, mm -hmm. pretty amazing. 
You can use a light color over dark colors or similar shades. And the way you're going to do this is you're going to roll on your base coat, let it completely dry, and then you're going to use just a standard paint. You don't need a glaze in this. You can use a glaze, but you don't have to use a glaze. And you're just going to dip a sponge. So a into... sea sponge? You... <laughs> that's the animal? That's not really an animal? <laughs> and, and I would definitely use a sea sponge because it's going to have irregularly shaped openings. Right. If you use just a standard cellulose sponge, it's going to be so uniform, you are not going to get a professional look. Right. All you're going to do is just, after your base coat's dried, you're just going to dip your sponge into your top coat and just start applying it in random, random patterns. Mm -hmm. You can tear off a small section to work in the corners and along trim, and so it's just fast, it's easy. Well, you can also so, get it on a mitt. You can get a mitt, and you can also get these roller colors, covers. So you can get a sponge roller cover, mm -hmm. and you can really do this fast. And then they have these mini narrow sponge rollers for around the trim of the corners. Mm, fancy. So just, you can get it done very fast. Some designers are saying experiment on some scrap drywall first because some of them suggest using up to six different colors depending on the effect you want to get. Wow. <laughs> That's so, so very interesting. That's people with a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> designers are recommending blues and purples to create a calm, peaceful mood. What if you want yeah. chaotic? Like black and red? <laughs> and, and bright gold. <laughs> Yellows and oranges for energetic and bright. For light and airy, they say pastel colors create mm. a nice mood. You'd want to tape off all the trim and adjoining areas wherever you're doing any of these faux finishes. I would remove the wall plates, tape off the switches and outlets. You always want to turn off the electric if you're ever you know, handling these devices. Use drop cloths. Probably very Co important since yeah. there's the potential of dripping. All right. The cloth or canvas is going to be the best, most absorbent. Plastic can be slippery, and then they have drop cloths with rubber backing. If you're going to be working on slippery areas, let's say tile or steps, mm -hmm. those are, are real nice. Lint-free cotton rags are good for ragging. Chamois rags, they're saying, are, are going to absorb less than cotton, so you're going to get a more subtle effect. With what is that called? A chamois, so C-H-A-M-O-I-S. I can't believe you weren't going to spell that. <laughs> Cheesecloth is going to create this fine mesh texture in mm -hmm. a glaze if you're ragging. Hmm. So it's funny how just the, the different materials will create a different look. And then they have roller covers that can either create texture looks. or And some of these roller covers are very interesting too. So some have like a brick design or a mm -hmm. tile shape yeah. or all these other weird patterns. And when you roll it on, it leaves behind this real subtle pattern. Nice. My friend Deanna wanted to know if we had any faux finish techniques for furniture. Do we? So, yeah. <laughs> so an aged look for furniture, you can use this with two contrasting colors. And you'd want to take all your hardware off first before you do any of these things. With an aged look, you can use a light color under a dark color. So you're going to put your light color on first, allow it to completely dry. Paint it with a dark color on top, let it fully dry, and then just lightly sand it on the edges and corners just enough so that base coat color shows through Interesting. and that makes it look aged. You can also get a distressed look, like an antique look, by using stains. A lot of the pros are recommending using spray paint with this. So use a spray paint, you're going to prime all the wood. Then you're so what, you're buying new furniture to make it look old? You can, you, <laughs> yeah, this or, or you can, or you can use old furniture and just give it this look. You know, so if you have old stained furniture and you just want to change the look, so with this okay, technique, that makes sense. you're you're gonna spray it first with a primer. You're gonna let that primer dry, and now you're gonna put your color on this. And light colors work well with a dark stain over it. So you spray it, you let that paint dry, and then you're gonna hit all the edges and random areas with sandpaper. You're gonna go down to the wood, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna take a rag with wood-colored stain, and you're gonna go over the top of everything. And this is going to allow that stain to soak into the areas where you've sanded, and then also cracks and crevices, and oh. then you're gonna buff it off with a dry rag, and you're just gonna see these stained little marks, and it's gonna give it this distressed look. To whitewash furniture, you can actually do this in any color. It doesn't have to be white. That's and misleading. The, and, the, and the light colors really get a nice effect. You want the grain of the wood and any color showing through this whitewash finish. You're going to remove your hardware first, and then if it has a glossy film on the top of it, you can use strippers or sandpaper. Mm -hmm. But for most furniture, you're just going to have to sand it to make sure that you're giving the whitewash something to grab onto. I would use latex paint, water-based paint, and to mix your whitewash, you're going to take two parts paint, 
one part water, mix this up, and then you're just going to brush it or roll it on and then wipe it off immediately with a sponge or a rag. And this is going to leave just a thin coat of paint and you're going to be able to see the wood grain. Let it dry and see how it looks. If you need to add a little more color, you can add a second coat to it. Again, oh. wipe it off immediately. Once this fully dries, then you can add a more distressed look by sanding the edges and random spots so that the undercoat shows through. That's interesting. And then you can protect the final look with a protective finish like an acrylic urethane. Do you have anything else to add? I would say if you want to try a faux finish, the sponging technique is the easiest mm -hmm. and use a natural sea sponge. If you're using the glazes, you're going to get more depth to that top coat color. It's going to be a little more interesting and it's going to give you a little more time to work with it too. If you're curious of what any of these techniques look like, I always tweet about the podcast every week. Right. Yep. I do a nice tweet, job. I have pictures of all the companies right. that we talk about. So it's Fix It co-host on Twitter. Yeah, very nice. You have one too. It's Fix It podcast. In case <laughs> you were wondering. <laughs> Thank you. So I take over that too. But <laughs> I'll give you credit. Thank you. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app, and iHeartRadio. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos and our Fix It Home Improvement channel on YouTube. We just hit 25 million views Outrageous. this week, so thank you to everybody who's been watching our videos. You can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you have to do